Hey everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. You know, one of the cool things about turbine engines is that everything's spinning in the same direction, so they're smoother and a lot more durable than piston engines where everything's going back and forth and pistons are slapping around at a mile a minute. But that doesn't mean that turbine engines like this PT6 here don't need to be overhauled. They do because certain things wear out. I've come here to United Turbine uh, near Miami to see how PT6s are overhauled. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about a, how a PT6 works. Now, PT6 is made by Pratt & Whitney Canada. This is a PT6-114, which is a caravan engine. And by jet standards, a PT6 is kind of backwards in that the air, instead of flowing from front to back, flows from back to front. This is the front of the engine where the propeller is. And if you look on a typical turbine, end, uh, turbine aircraft, the inlet will be down here at the bottom. The air flows backward up into the compressor section. Now there are three compressor wheels in there, three actual and one centrifugal. And from there, the compressed air is fed into the burner unit or what we call the hot section. The fuel is introduced and that produces hot gas that is uh, directed at the power turbine. And the power turbine is connected directly to a uh, gearbox assembly. This particular model and most PT6s have a two-stage gearbox reduction to get it down to uh, prop RPM. The PT6 is a free turbine engine, which means that there's no direct mechanical uh, connection between what's called the gas generator and the power section. There's a space in there, not like a turbo shaft where everything is connected. So that's the basics of how a PT6 works. Now we're going to take a look at how they're overhauled. Uh, the first step is receive the engine from the customer, put it on an engine disassembly stand, and take it to disassembly. The engine gets disassembled to every nut, every bolt, uh, every washer, every gasket, everything comes apart. After disassembly, the engine goes through a cleaning process, which is made up of uh, mineral spirits cleaning, uh, stripping with an acid stripper, um, degreasing, and then after, once the engine is clean, it goes to NDT. NDT is basically a crack inspection. Uh, we do mag particle inspection and liquid penetrant. Once it's completed that, it goes through dimensional inspection per overhaul manual. In inspection, we, we go through the overhaul manual to check what they ask us to check as far as dimensions, um, if it comes out cracked in NDT, if that, if that crack can be repaired. Um, if we look for any scoring that can be fixed or not be fixed. And our ultimate goal is to see what we can put back in the engine, what can be repaired, and what can be replaced, or what needs to be replaced. Well, all O-rings get replaced. Um, there's some models that have different things that require certain items to be replaced. For example, this one requires a new prop shaft, new sun gear, new gear set. Um, that varies across different engine models, um, but the biggest one is probably the sun gear and the gear set, the first stage. After inspection, we give the cost estimate to the customer once they approve it. Those parts that we can repair in-house go in-house and get repaired in our machine shop or paint shop or other rework areas we have here. Whatever we cannot do, like welding, we send that out. Um, any coating we can do for the housings in-house. Any coating for the compressor or high performance coating goes to an outside vendor. Once all those parts come back, we issue what we have from stock and buy what we don't have out on the open market and we bring those, all those engines to an engine stand. Once the mechanic has all his parts, he can go ahead with assembly. Um, all the main rotors get balanced in our balance room here. And once everything is balanced, we can finish assembly. And once assembly is finished, we go to test up. If the mechanic has all his parts, he can assemble an engine um, up for a regular eight hour shift in about five days. Testing process takes uh, an hour to two hours. We verify their performance of the engine uh, based on overhaul limits um, as far as temperature and speed. We also check for vibration, uh, make sure that that's within overhaul limits, um, both in the accessory gearbox and throughout the compressor and the reduction gearbox. Um, and once we confirm that all those numbers are correct, the engine has passed tests. It goes through final assembly, which is mostly safety wire and additional items added that are not needed for test. 
Once that's done, it goes to the final inspection, and uh, the chief inspector goes through the engine, makes sure all the paperwork is up to date, everything was done correctly, and he's the one that signs off the engine, issues an 8130 and 337 form, and then it's ready to ship back to the customer.